So today I want to talk about TweetDeck. I think it is a phenomenal tool and one that lets you really get the most out of Twitter, which is by far my favorite social media app. I think it's a great way to engage in topics that you're passionate about, a great way to connect with people. If you are an entrepreneur, a social media manager, or just somebody that wants to connect with more people, I think utilizing TweetDeck, which is a desktop version of Twitter, you can access this platform uh, through either TweetDeck.com or you can get it through the App Store and have it be an actual application on your desktop. It essentially just provides you the ability to have multiple columns based off of different settings. It really helps you to see a variety of uh, activity that's going on on Twitter and you can really customize it to certain keywords, lists, all things that I'm gonna get into because I think over the, the past few years of having used the application, I've really learned how to kind of hack it to get the most out of it for me and hopefully as you see my layout, you kind of understand how you might be able to utilize it more. All right, so let's get into it. So here we are in my setup. As you can see, I already have some columns set to my preferences. If you have never used TweetDeck before, when you first log in, most of it will be blank. We'll get into how to set up your columns here in a sec. So here in settings is where you can set your TweetDeck preferences, including dark versus light mode. For any app that I personally use, I always go with dark mode. On this tab is also where you can choose column length as well as font size. Here on the link tab, you can choose to have your links shortened either by Twitter or by Bitly. And finally, we have mute where you can mute keywords. This is a great place to mute keywords based off of TV shows if you don't want spoilers. <laughs> the next area of settings is search tips. Without a doubt, one of the greatest ways of using Twitter is to search by keywords. This is a great way to join conversations, especially if you are a business owner. Using advanced searches is a great means of finding potential targeted customers. I'm not going to get into depth into all of these, but I highly recommend referencing this page and using the new Try It feature, which sets up a column for you. I have found this to be particularly useful because even if you make minor syntax errors, including capitalization with search types, uh, they don't necessarily work. The next tab is a reference of hotkeys. I haven't really taken the time to memorize these myself, but in general, hotkeys are a great means of being more efficient within desktop applications. The next tab is accounts. So within TweetDeck, one of the really useful aspects is that you can have multiple Twitter accounts. So this is particularly useful if you are a social media manager of multiple accounts. Then right above that we have collapse. This is just a means of minimizing this sidebar so that you can maximize the amount of columns visible on the screen at a given time. And then TweetDeck has created a special type of column where you can combine the attributes of multiple accounts into one timeline and that is for messages and mentions. So here are the different types of columns that you can create. So home is the regular timeline of tweets of any accounts that you're following. So this is essentially what you'll normally see in Twitter. User is all the tweets that you have personally tweeted. Notifications will show you your notifications. Search creates a column based on your search criteria. List, this is a low-key favorite feature of mine which is unfortunately extremely underutilized in Twitter because of how poorly it is integrated into the mobile application. So this feature allows you to create a group of people into a list. I'll show you how to use this feature here in a sec and then we'll dive into how you can create one. But essentially it's a great way of having a timeline based on a group. I find that it's a nice way to catch up on friends tweets that you might have otherwise missed. Activity is a really interesting one. Uh, this column will show you a timeline of the activity of accounts you follow. So, so if someone you follow likes a tweet or makes a new follow that will appear here. Likes is a column made up of all the tweets that you have personally liked. Messages, this is for direct messages. This is normally a tab that I have in my layout, but I decided to take it out while filming this for 
a matter of privacy. Mentions shows you all the tweets that you have been mentioned in. These will also show up in the notifications column. Followers show you all your new followers. Again, this will also show up in your notifications tab, but this is also just a means of separating those out. Scheduled shows you tweets that you have scheduled. Yeah, that's right. You can schedule a tweet for a specific time. I'll show you that in a bit as well. And then we have the combined columns that I was talking about with messages and mentions. And finally, trending. So trending, you either have the option to trend tailored for you or trend based on a selected country. So these can be really useful to keep up to date with a topic that's in the news uh, or that's just trending in general on Twitter. So now that you've created your columns, they will appear as the main body of the application. So mine are actually set up in a designed order, but for me that has a tendency to change. An easy way to switch the column order is to drag and drop the column on the left hand sidebar. Or you can do it at the top of the column like so. Here's a quick look at my setup based on some of the columns that we have talked about. One thing to easily notice in the activity feed is when somebody you follow goes on a follow spree, sometimes this prompts me to look at their account and make sure that I still want to follow them. It's nothing against them, but it's just a good reminder of if I really still want to follow them and why I followed them in the first place. So one thing to note here is that you are now able to vote in polls in TweetDeck. This is a brand new feature. So you might have noticed that you can't see the number of retweets and likes from this initial view. Once you click on the tweet itself to expand it, this is actually where you can view that information. want to go if you want to edit the current list to add or remove people from it. It's fairly simple. So this is where you want to go if you want to create a new list. You also have the option to have your list be public or private. This changes whether or not lists will appear on your profile and those added into it will be notified that they've been added to the list. Next I've created a group of Cleveland people that I have networked with. And then this dream list one is just a funny idea that I had in terms of grouping people that I would like to meet. So the next part of my layout is this search column. I think if you use searches correctly, they can be a huge asset to your TweetDeck experience. So this Apple column is one that I had created when I recorded this prior to the Apple event. And I used that column to stay up to date with any news that was surrounding that topic and to engage in conversations. So you might remember that when it comes to setting up a new column that you have an extensive amount of search options that you can use. And here Twitter has nicely laid out an interface which allows you to access some of those advanced search features. And then in particular, one that I think is really interesting to work with is this engagement section, which allows you to place a search result based off of a minimum number of retweets, likes, or replies. And the way that I've used this in the past is to see the tweets around a subject that have gained traction. Being able to search for tweets around a subject that have the most engagement can really give you a dynamic look into that topic and what people's thoughts are on that topic. And then this last column that I want to show you guys and talk about is this networking column that I configured. And my thought process behind this is that I could set up a search 
for people within the area that I live who had tweeted at the entrepreneurs, creatives, YouTubers that I follow. And given that if other people had tweeted about those individuals, then there was a good chance that we had something, we obviously had something in common with and that that would be a good basis for a networking opportunity. And it just so ends up that this kind of worked in my favor a few months ago when I met a YouTuber by the name of Jay Montage. Uh, me and him have become really good friends since. I really appreciate that I was able to network hack that opportunity using this search result. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Sam Sheffer, who I've been following for a while for having first introduced me to this software and somebody who has also said that he wants to make a video. So I look forward to seeing any advanced type of hacks that he might have. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And of course, make sure to follow me on Twitter and make sure to tweet at me what you liked about this video and what you might want to see as a follow-up. Peace.